Anakin, why are you awake? Why are you sweaty? Why did you do? I had weird dreams about my mother. Angst, angst, angst. Okay, I will follow you into the space. Even though it makes no sense why I would be into you when Obi-Wan is right there. Hello, my book hoes, and welcome to another episode of me in my sewing room doing stuff. I'm Bianca, and my channel is Book Hoarding by Bianca, where I talk about crafts, sewing, and, you know, various other fandom things. And today's project... Ta -da! Fancy graphics here. Today's project is inspired by a very fancy thing that Padme Amidala wears on Attack of the Clones, but instead, I didn't go fancy, I went cheap and comfy. If you watched my video with Megan where we go over every single Padme costume, you will know that I love nerding out about the costume design for Star Wars. There are tons of costumes that Padme gets to wear and they're luxurious, they're wonderful, they're so cool, they have incredible fabrics, but those aren't really attainable for most folks. I'm not gonna go for screen accuracy because not only is it really expensive and I just don't have a budget for it, but like where am I gonna wear it, where am I gonna store it? If you've seen Attack of the Clones, then you know toward the end Padme and Anakin are having some like alone time at the lake with like some of the cringiest love scenes, flirtation scenes known to man. Anyway, she is wearing this really basic slip under uh, this beautiful smocked velvet robe thing. We don't get much time with this smocked outfit, but like it's stunning. We know enough about it from the notes from the costume designer, Trisha Bigger, and other interviews and stuff around the costume to know that it took a lot of work for so little screen time. <laughs> There's lots of different debate about the actual yardage for this because smocking and uh, different ways of fabric manipulation are going to take up your fabric. And theoretically, the lattice smocking they use for this takes up 50% of your fabric and reduces it. We don't know the width of the yardage they use, but we do know that they talk a lot in the interviews about it being 20 plus yards. Now, I don't know about you, but I do not have the kind of money or patience to smock 20 something yards of velvet. Also, if I did all that work, do you think I'd be wearing that around the house spilling coffee on it? No, 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 no. Here is what's happening today. I have made this wonderful comfy cozy shrug thing that is kind of like a Poirot coat, which I will talk about in a second, but is mostly just a comfy cozy thing I can wear around the house and not worry or stress about ruining. It is made from a sofa covering. Yes. It is 100% an upcycled thing. The lining is actually fabric, like lining fabric, but the the fake velvet stuff is a stretch velvet that was a sofa cover. I was eager to make this not only because celebrations coming up, but earlier in the pandemic, I made a Poirot coat from a folk wear pattern that I wear all the time. It is my comfiest, coziest thing. I used cosplay vel crushed velvet for it. It's a thing I can leave at my desk and have on during meetings and it looks really cool and rich because it looks like velvet and also it's just comfy. I can go around the house, I can pop it in the washer and dryer and not worry about it ruining. I decided to make another cool comfy cozy thing. And this time, because I'm trying to get my skills a little bit better, um, I did smocking. Maybe it wouldn't be for a senator, but it would definitely be for a student. So let's talk about the elements of this that might be a little bit like a Poirot coat. If you check out my blog, I actually have a pretty popular post where I talk about making the Poirot coat. The Poirot or cocoon coat is basically this like beautifully draped thing that um, was very popular during the Art Deco period. It literally looks like a cocoon. There are so many variations on this. There's short, there's long, there's all of these different ways that you can embellish it. You can have these massive crossovers, you can have not, you can have little, where it's just around like a shrug, but like there's all this cool drapey stuff down at the bottom. There are lots of variations on this thing. And in the blog post, I talk about the history of it. So I will link to that in my description. For this outfit, I am yes, inspired by Star Wars, but also inspired by comfort. After constructing the Poirot coat last year, was it last year? Was it two years ago? How long have I been inside? After making my first cocoon coat, I realized how easy it is. And I will put a photo right here that you can see of the construction and how that works. It is so easy. It's really just this massive drape thing that just needs two seams. Later in the video, I go into way more detail about the construction of this, but the essentials that you need to know are if you've ever walked around the house 
with a massive blanket around you because you're cold and you kind of pull it around you like this and you have the corners in your hand and you're like this that's kind of what I did here instead of doing the actual Art Deco cocoon coat thing which requires a little bit more finesse with the cutting and all that with the knowledge that this is a sofa cover that has just been remade into a comfy cozy thing let's get into this Okay, so you see, I used Sharpie to make my little smocking grid, and if you're wondering how to make the smocking grid, do not worry, friend. This tutorial is coming later in the video. You can see I did the whole thing because I wasn't sure how much I would need because smocking takes up a lot. It was my first project. This is a diagram of how this is going to look, but I basically smocked down three sides of this big piece of fabric. And this is the diagram, which is included in my notes in the blog. So don't worry if you want to spend extra time with it, but it's basically going to attach like this where the corners become the sleeves. Think about like if you're draping like a blanket around you and how you kind of use that. I kind of do that, but then I sew it down and it becomes a cool little casual thing to wear and not just a blanket. Okay, now enjoy my hands not being in focus, but my Ross bag being in focus as I show you me slowly smocking this, although it's like honestly slightly sped up um, because it took me many episodes of Project Runway to go through this. And yes, I have been making my way through the old episodes of Project Runway on Hulu because why not? Now here's the center back, the latticing there. I think it looks so good. I love the deep um, draping that comes off of it on the top and the bottom. I think it looks really, really, really cool. Um, but yeah, I did drape up the middle back and you could see the wider shot here of how this looks. So again, three sides, those top corners are going to become the little sleeve handholds. And then this thing in the center is that thing. And you can see, Hey, cause I have rabbits. Um, Hey, gets everywhere. That's going to be the middle back. Um, because once I did the top three sides, I realized I would need to bring it up a little off the floor. And then here's just me pinning the lining to this. So basically what I did was I pinned right side to right side and then I sewed that down. And again, here's the diagram. Um, I pulled this inside out and then what I did was I sewed the sleeve. So the only thing that you really need to sew for this is the lining and the sleeves, as you can see here. And, um, I left the sleeves as pointed little things because I'm definitely going to be putting little finger loops in there so that they can just be kind of cool, uh, like fantasy wear ish things. Right. Also enjoy my living room being a mess. So you can see one side sewn and the other side's not. So the right side of your screen, that sleeve is sewn and the left side's not. And I need to tack down the lining still, but Oh, here's some video of me just trying it on. The sun is directly into this uh, mirror. So please ignore. Um, but yeah, you can see me in my baby Yoda pajamas that uh, I'm trying it on and that's the sleeve that's done right there and then uh, the other side needs to get done and then um, rabbit break because it's necessary and like look at how cute they are. I just, I can't deal with them being on their baby, their doll Ikea bed. Just cute. Oh my god. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Keep it together. Bring it back. Bring it back. Okay. So, um, I'm going to show you on this piece of muslin, instead of doing my homework for my fashion class, how to do this lattice smocking. What you're going to do is you're going to make a grid. I am just freehanding this and whatever, but reminder that smocking will take up a bunch of your fabric. It can reduce your fabric about like 50%, um, a little less, a little more, depending on like how tightly you're doing this, but it's basically manipulating the fabric. So you're going to bring it in bringing it in. Words are hard, but basically I'm going to make a one inch by one inch grid on here. I used for this actual garment, a two inch by two inch. And I use Sharpie because this is an old sofa cover and I don't care. It didn't stain through and you would be fine. Also, I could see it better. Like I used a much lighter marker and I just couldn't see it in my living room with a dark fabric and my eyes are terrible because I'm old, all these things. Um, came together for this. So here we are. I made this little template and you can see it a little bit better here. And then you're going to draw what I, in my mind, I was like, it's like Plinko, but like Plinko doesn't look like this, right? It doesn't, but you know what I mean? So you're going to draw this little grid on here. Um, and again, I'm using pen cause this is a muslin. Like who cares? Uh, you use whatever is going to be fabric safe for your stuff. Again, I used Sharpie on my final product. Uh, 
so don't judge me because I don't really care if you don't like that I use Sharpie. Like, please, let's find a hobby. Um, now here we are. Here's what the grid's going to look like. And you can see it kind of mimics, right? It kind of looks a little bit like a latticing a little bit. Now, I use four ply thread. So that's basically, I do um, two full lengths of thread together, loop it through the thing, and then um, I wax it. Although I didn't wax it for the example because I couldn't find my wax for this, but here we are. So those lines are going to be pulled together. And a reminder that the dots are gonna go on the back side. And you're not really gonna see the pattern make any sense on this side of it. But then you're gonna knot that. So basically, you're just going to have these loose threads. So as I sew to this thread, there's no line between them, right? Between that dot. So I'm just going to knot, loop and knot, um, all of those and have that be loose thread. You see that? Okay, so then that dot connects to a line. So then I'm going to sew to that next dot and I'm going to pull in that fabric and then knot it. So this is gonna take a lot of knotting. It's just gonna be a, a lesson in patience, if you will. Again, go down, I leave this loose. I'm going to knot it to make sure that it stays secure and then go to the next. When you're done with the row, again, just tie off um, and then go to the next. And see, like you're, you can turn it over and it's not gonna look amazing um, when you just do a little bit of it. You really need to do quite a bit of it for you to like see the pattern come together. So don't get frustrated. Um, just double check your diagram and double check what you're doing. But I just start the next, next um, row that I can see. And if you pre-mark out all the sp spots that you need done, it shouldn't be like if you lose your spot it shouldn't be terrible because you know that the only things you need to sew are where the dots connect by a line right so there are a couple times on my big thing um that when i was doing the the top of it the shoulder where it connected to the sides i got a little confused um, but i counted the dots and and then i i worked from there but i'd already marked everything so i didn't need to really worry about uh what was like what I couldn't do because like I, I knew exactly what I needed to do um but it was easy to just like kind of dig around and find the couple of missed lines that I hadn't done if that makes sense so whatever I'm rambling you get it to take your time um be patient use really good lighting um you know obviously for a muslin I am using a contrasting thread so you can see it but in real life you you know I used um blue thread for my actual thing so here it is finished look at that you can kind of see it come together it's going to look and drape differently depending on what fabrics you're using um but this is the most basic way to do lattice smocking and I will link to the blogs that I use to learn how to do this and I hope they're really helpful so again it's not gonna look like much if you don't do a ton of it you can see here I just did a little bit of the muslin you saw after my first row it was fine um so just be patient do I smell another garment? Wait, I've seen you before, but not at the union meetings. Hmm. Oh, were you the sofa cover? Mad respect for this makeover. Well, I'm going to consider you an official union member. Welcome to Scrap Aftra, the union of scraps at the book hoarding by Bianca House. Your welcome packet is in the mail. Until next time. Now, we wouldn't really be at the end of a book hoarding DIY if I didn't have two more things to do on this. Two things are I need to go inside and tap down the lining a little bit more inside. I also need to add the little um, elastic finger things here so that they can be these cute little like princess uh, cuffs, if you will. So I had a finger loops for the point to go on. So that's just like the 1.0 version. The 2.0 version, I definitely want to um, make some gold lace that I can put here along here to mimic the lace work or the detail work that's on her actual thing. And I also might use a gold clasp of some kind to cover up a more reinforced seam right here because 
this these are the two seams on this garment right here and right here and they need a little bit more reinforcing because they carry so much weight on them but besides that like it's just comfy it's just nice i just love it it also like smells good I use the good fabric softener stuff on it it's just it's nice at some point, I'm definitely going to do a better photo shoot with my husband with this, where he's dressed up more like Anakin. But for now, here you go. I just love how this looks outside. I love how it looks in the sun. You can see all the smocking. Thank you so much for joining me, patrons. Thank you so much for supporting this project. If you aren't a patron, please check it out. Members of all tiers get a special Discord um, server invite that you're all invited to to see sneak peeks of my work. And thank you for joining me. Don't forget to make it so. But also here's a little extra of me trying to get Frank to pose as my Anakin or Obi-Wan uh, to mimic the Vanity Fair photo that uh, I think is pretty iconic and dramatic. Um, but he's adorable and I want to say thank you Frank for supporting me going to fashion school and rethinking my life choices during a pandemic.